Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Toby Eye Tracker 5, what is it? How it can help you? But more importantly, how to set everything up on your PC? Coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. Before we jump into today's video, I just have one disclaimer. This is a sponsored video by Toby, and they also sent me the Toby Eye Tracker 5 for review. If you decide to purchase the Toby Eye Tracker, I did post a link down in the description. This is not an affiliate link, but if you purchase it soon, you can take advantage of the 15% off discount of the Toby Eye Tracker. Toby is also running the Explore the World sweepstakes. You can win a free Toby Eye Tracker 5, a Thrustmaster TCA Officer Pack, or a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator. I will also be doing a subscriber appreciation giveaway where you could win the Toby Eye Tracker 5. Look for that in an upcoming video. If you have any comments or questions along the way, post them down below in the comments and I'll get right back to you. If you enjoy today's content, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Before we discuss what the Toby Eye Tracker 5 is and how it can help you, I would first like to go over the biggest immersion breaker in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and that's using your mouse to pan and zoom inside the cockpit. When you need to read any of your gauges, you've got to use your mouse scroll wheel, and it really becomes a pain. In comes the Toby Eye Tracker 5. This is an amazing device that has changed the game in all flight simulators, or any simulation for that matter. So let me explain. On the hardware side of things, this is a very slim and streamlined device made of predominantly metal. This makes for a very robust piece of hardware that you can assure is going to last you for years to come. On the back side of the device, it is held on your monitor via a magnet. So it is very modular if you want to switch this between monitors. Now, on the software side of things, this is going to track and mimic all of your head, face, and eyes inside a Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, I can't really tell you how all this magic happens, but what I can tell you is this works very, very well. Gone are the days of using your mouse to zoom in and zoom out, pan around the cockpit. The Toby Eye Tracker 5 has really elevated the game in flight simulation and has picked up all the shortcomings of Microsoft Flight Simulator when it comes to moving around inside the cockpit. So, thumbs up for the Toby Eye Tracker 5. So now that you have received your Toby Eye Tracker, what do you get in the box? Upon opening the very durable clamshell box that the Toby comes in, you are presented with the Toby Eye Tracker 5. Below the Toby Eye Tracker 5, we have an extendable USB cable, and this is a very welcome add-on to the Toby Eye Tracker because as you will see in this video, I did need to use that because my USBs are on the left-hand side and on the Toby Eye Tracker, the cord comes out on the right-hand side. Now, it's very important that this is installed the proper way, that you have these indexing lines on the Toby Eye Tracker 5 facing up. So this way, when we go through the calibration, we will be able to accurately calibrate the Toby Eye Tracker module to your monitor. So now let's go to the PC. We'll get on the Toby website, go over all the downloads, and then we will go through the setup and calibration process for the eye tracker. Once we're finished there, we'll sign into Microsoft and I'll go over all of my preferred settings inside of there. So let's do it. All right, we're over at the PC now. I'm going to assume that you have already purchased your Toby eye tracker and have it attached to the bottom of your monitor. Now we're going to go over all the downloads that are needed to get everything to work with your PC. Links for this website will be down in the description. Once you're here, the first thing we need to do is to go up to the Downloads tab at the very top. Once on the Downloads page, we then need to select the hardware that we want to download software for. So we're going to choose the Toby Eye Tracking. Below that, we can choose which Toby Eye Tracker we're working with today, and that's going to be the Toby Eye Tracker 5. Below this is our Toby Experience Driver version 1.133. And this is what we need to download to get our computer to sync with the Toby Eye Tracker. So you will click on Download Driver and it should populate in your web browser. Now, if you are someone who is a streamer, 
and you would like to display the Toby Ghost Bubble on your screen while you're streaming to show all of your viewers of what you're looking at, then you really want to download the Toby Ghost version 1.14.1, and this will overlay the Toby Ghost Bubble on your stream using the OBS software. Now, we're not going to get into that today, but I just wanted to show everyone that it is available. Once your download has finished, you want to install the Toby Experience driver. If you have downloaded the Toby Ghost, you want to make sure that you install that once the Toby Experience driver has been installed. This also goes for the Toby Game Hub. You want to do this after you install the Toby Experience driver. Once everything has been installed, it will take you through the calibration process. Now, unfortunately, I wasn't able to get all of that on camera, so I'm going to go through the calibration process now. So to start the calibration, we can come up to the cog here in the upper right hand corner and we're going to press on that. Below here, we can turn on and off the Toby experience. Below that is how we can improve the calibration. Now, before we can set up any calibration, we need to set this up for our display. To do that, we're going to go down to Change Screen Display. Once in the calibration menu, you will see a virtual Toby Eye Tracker 5 on the bottom of your monitor. Now, earlier in the video, I said it was very important that the Toby Eye Tracker get placed in the upright position. And that is because we have two alignment marks on the very top of the Toby Eye Tracker. These white alignment marks we need to align with the virtual Toby Eye Tracker that we see on the screen. So as you see here, we have the alignment mark on the virtual with a dotted line that comes down and a left and right arrow. We want to use these left and right arrows to align the virtual alignment mark on the Toby Eye Tracker to our actual alignment mark on our Toby Eye Tracker that is attached to the bottom of our monitor. Now the Toby Eye Tracker needs to calibrate the location of your head. So to do this, we're going to sit in an upright position in front of your screen, and then we're just going to hit the Done button. Once you have gone through that, you have now set up the Toby Eye Tracker for your current display. And this process will be repeated if you want to switch to an alternate display. But we're not done yet. We now need to calibrate the Toby Eye Tracker for our eyes. We need to come up to the settings cog. We're then going to go down to improve calibration. Once in this calibration menu, you will notice two white dots in the very center of your screen. These are to represent your left and right eyes. Now the object here is to try to get your eyes as close to the center of the screen as possible when you're sitting normally in your chair. Now as you can see, I am a little bit low on the screen. So I would need to either raise myself up in the chair a little bit, or I can tilt the Toby Eye Tracker down a little bit. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to go ahead and lower the Toby Eye Tracker down. And now as you can see, my eyes are much closer to the center of the screen. They don't have to be exactly in the center, but the closer that you can get them to the center, then the better the software is going to be at picking up your head when you're moving it down in the cockpit or up in the cockpit. I hope that makes sense. So now what we need to do is to move closer to the screen like it tells us. Once that is done, we need to look at each of these dots and it's going to explode on our screen. Once that happens, we know the calibration is finished. You're going to do that with each of the dots that are on your screen. And once that finishes, all of your calibration is now set up. Now, one other thing that I wanted to go over here on the Toby eye tracking software is that we also have the preview my gaze here as well. So if you're not going to be streaming any of this on OBS and you don't want to have the overlay, you can turn on the preview my gaze and now you can see everywhere where my eyes are looking. But for right now, we're just going to turn that off. Below the preview my gaze, here's where we can select different eyes that we would like the Toby to detect. Just like it states here, if you typically squint or have poor eyesight in one eye, you can make the eye tracker detect one eye only 
so it can be more accurate when you're in the sim. For me, I'm going to leave it set to both, and then we can minimize that. At the bottom, we can also create a user profile if you were going to set this up between various users. Once you're done here, all we need to do is to go up and click the X, and it will minimize that to our system tray. All right, so that is the setup process for the Toby Eye Tracker 5. We're now going to launch the sim, hop inside, and I'll show you all of my settings there. I'll bring you right back in just a second. All right, so now we're in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and before I go over any of my settings for the Toby Eye Tracker 5, there's a couple of key binds that we need to go over first. The first one is to toggle on and off the eye tracking, and the second is to center the eye tracking once you get in the cockpit. So let me show you how to do that real quick. The first thing we're going to do is to go up to the options, down to controls. Once you're in the controls menu, we need to choose the peripheral that we're going to map these buttons to. So I'm going to use the keyboard for this. Once you choose your peripheral, make sure that you go down to the filter section and we're going to set this to all. It's going to be important so this way it brings up all of the menus that we need to display. Second thing we're going to do is to go up to search by name and all you need to do here is just type in track. Once you do that, you will see both of the inputs that you need to map to a keyboard binding or whatever peripheral you choose. So now that you have your key bindings mapped, now let's get into the settings for the Toby Eye Tracker 5. To do that, we're going to get there right from the controls menu. At the very top, we're just going to scroll all the way over until we get to the Toby option. It is also a good idea to create a custom profile specifically for you. Now that's because you're not able to change any of the default settings of the Toby. If you try to, it's going to ask you to create a profile anyway, so it's just best to do that now. So let me show you how to do that. At the very bottom, we're going to open Preset Manager. We're going to go over to Duplicate, and then we can type in the profile name that you want to use for the Toby profile. I've already created one and named it 2020FSers, so that's what we'll be using today. Now notice that when I clicked on the Toby, you don't see any options populate in the center. To change any of your settings inside the Toby Eye Tracker 5, you need to click on the sensitivity button. Once you're in this menu, here's where we can adjust all of the various settings that we have available to us. And I must say, it is really nice that the Toby Eye Tracker is already integrated in the Microsoft Flight Simulator eliminating a lot of nonsense work that we need to do with other applications. So let's start at the very top, which is the eye versus head tracking ratio. Here is also where you're going to be able to turn off your eye tracking if you don't want it. So what this will do is it will choose either your eye or your head tracking to be the dominant tracking object, we'll say. So for me, I like it at 0.90, that gives me just a very little bit of eye tracking and it's mostly using my head movements to determine where the camera is going to be showing. Now I found this very very useful especially if you're looking around in the cockpit or you want to keep your head static then you can just move your eyes around and the screen will move very slightly with that. Now below this setting is the eye tracking responsiveness. Now this is going to be how fast the screen is going to react to when you are moving your eyes around. I found that the 0.80 for this gives the perfect sweet spot for me because I do not want a lot of lag, but I also don't want it too twitchy. So you'll understand what I'm talking about if you turn that all the way up. Below the eye tracking responsiveness is our head tracking sensitivity. Now this is going to control the pitch up and down or the yaw when you're looking left and right. Now for me, I don't need to look in the back seat all the time, and I think the factory setting, here let's hit reset real quick, yep, the factory setting is two. So that means it's going to compound your head movement by two times. So it doesn't really take much to turn your head, and now you're looking in the back seat. So I find that by turning this down a little bit, allows me to have more smooth movements when I'm looking left and right. Below that we have center stabilization 
and factory it's set at 20.20 and for my liking that is just fine for me. This is going to be more of a dead zone for your head so the higher you make this the bigger the dead zone so if you're looking straight it's going to take a bigger left or right movement to get that camera to start moving. Below that is the head tracking sensitivity roll. I leave it at one. I found that that was just fine. Below the head tracking roll is head tracking sensitivity of position. Now what this really means is when you're zooming in or zooming out on your gauges or trying to look out the window. So whenever you lean forward, it's going to zoom the camera in on your screen. And whenever you pull back, it's going to zoom the camera out on the screen. For my personal preference, 2.2 seems to be the best for me because I don't really want to have to lean way, way far forward to see any of my gauges. So a little bit of a movement and that zooms me in quite a bit. At the very bottom is our head tracking auto center. Now this is going to be used for if you're looking around and it kind of loses your tracking a little bit, it will automatically center you once you start looking straight again. In my personal opinion, I found this was a little bit finicky, so I leave it off. And if I want to recenter myself, I can just hit the F12 on my keyboard. Much, much easier for me. So that's going to take care of all of the settings for the Tobii Eye Tracker 5. Let's spawn into the sim and show you how it's going to react. I'm also going to use some sunglasses, and it is actually a very dark room that I have here. So we're going to test this out and see just how good of tracking we have. All right, so now that we're spawned in the sim, you can see we are outside of the cockpit here. And that's where those hotkeys that we set up earlier are going to come in handy here. So I'm just going to hit F12 on my keyboard and it should center us in the cockpit. And there we go. Now for this demonstration, I'm also going to use the ghost bubble so you can see exactly where I'm looking. Now for this, if I turn my head left or right, as you can see, the settings are very, very smooth. Now what I'm going to do is to look straight ahead at the mountains here, and I'm not going to move my head at all. I'm going to look down at the gauges, and I'll show you what's going to happen to the screen. So as you can see, the screen does move ever so slightly with my eye movements. So now what I'd like to do is to address all the glasses wearers out there. Let's see just how good this system does if I put on a set of sunglasses. Now keep in mind that it is pretty dark in this room and I only have a very small light on behind the camera. I'm looking left, I'm looking at the little side window here. I'm looking at the center fuel. I'm looking at all my switches down below. So as you can see, this is very, very accurate. Even if you're wearing glasses, I, I can't believe just how good it can do looking through a pair of sunglasses. Now, I don't think these are polarized and I'm not sure if this would actually work with polarized glasses or not, but I doubt you're going to be wearing sunglasses playing the simulator here. The other hotkey that we set up was to completely disable or toggle on and off the Toby eye tracker. So if I turn it off, I can now look around the cockpit normally. As you see, it is still tracking my eye movements, which is pretty cool because when you turn the Toby eye tracker back on, it's going to pick up exactly where it left off. Alrighty folks, that's going to finish us up for today's episode. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments and I'll get right back to you. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.